All right, I'm um, using just his uh, slides. Uh, that's that's the little one down there. That's my firm, Faskin. <laughs> We've got a little bit of branding. Um, but in fact, uh, Just Chair is my client. Um, it was the most wonderful uh, instruction that I got uh, last year uh, from Just Chair, together with its partner, Client Earth, which is also down there, um, an NGO in, in the UK. Oh, can you hear me or should I use this? This is better. Okay, all right. So I was telling you I had this wonderful instruction last year from Just Chair, uh, which was a very uh, relatively new NGO, um, and its partner, Client Earth in the UK. Client Earth, uh, through its various partners in various jurisdictions, had been getting legal opinions written uh, by lawyers in various jurisdictions on the duties of trustees to take client cha uh, climate change into account when making investment decisions. So I was asked to look at this in South Africa. Uh, yes, I've, um, as Mark was saying, I've been thinking a bit about the ESG and writing a bit about it over the years, but this instruction forced me to stop and think and go back to basics. What are pension funds for? And uh, what does that say about our legal duties uh, to take into account ESG factors or otherwise, including, including climate change? So I was asked to write this opinion. It is on the Just Chair website if you kind of person who needs to look at long legal opinions to go to sleep at night. Um, but I'm going to, we've been talking a lot about the horror, frankly, that's facing us. And I want to explain to you why it's actually a really cool thing to be a trustee with a position, being in a position of power and responsibility to, to actually maybe, maybe change that, that future trajectory because of um, the nature of the funds, the nature of our, our duties as trustees, and, and all of us who provide services and products to, to funds, and, and the opportunities that creates. But so, uh, so let me just uh, take you through, I don't need to talk about this, I think that the previous speakers have, have talked about the systemic risks uh, posed to us all. So I'm gonna to talk to you about fiduciary duties, because that's the legal stuff. So they, as I mentioned, uh, they, they commissioned this legal opinion. It took me quite a time to write. Fortunately, um, Tracy Davies of uh, Just Show is a lawyer, so I could get uh, feedback. So this Client Earth is actually an NGO of, of lawyers. Um, so it was a great pleasure working with them on this stuff. And the basic arguments that I made in the paper, which are available for you to read, we all know that uh, if you're under the Pension Funds Act, and not all our pension funds are, then uh, we've got it there in 7C, but it's also in the common law that says you've got an uh, you owe fiduciary duty to the fund. And in 2014, they put in this funny clause that said, and also to members. And that sort of created a lot of confusion because we do hear. I remember way back in 2005 doing some trustee training when I was uh, talking about the duty of trustees when taking investment decisions to take environmental, social justice stuff into account as social and governance um, factors into account when making investment decisions. I had people in a very patronizing way saying, young lady, <laughs> and I wasn't even that young then, uh, you know the duty of trustees is to make as much money as possible for our members. And so it's been quite a struggle to actually deal with that argument because our law, uh, before we had the Pension Funds Act, our pension funds are largely trusts, and trust law is very, well, quite different in many ways to, to uh, pension law because pension funds are legal entities and trusts aren't. But even in, in the UK where they still have pension funds that are trusts, the courts have said these are special kinds of trusts. They're not just your regular family trusts where you have to say, these are my defined beneficiaries, I can look them in the eyes, and I must make sure that they get as much money as possible. Pension trusts are not like that. Pension trusts, in even the UK, and I've cited some Canadian authority and in other places, pension funds are long-term vehicles. That some of our, the people we're actually having to, uh, to advance and, and protect and, um, and when making investment decisions haven't even become members of the fund yet. So let me take you through these, these principles briefly. Oh, I just, I just cited this very important decision of the Supreme Court of Appeal that said when the Pension Funds Act was amended and said, now you have to have fiduciary duties, not only to the fund, but also to the members. The court said, interpreting that, when you say members, you're talking about members as a whole. 
and pension fund trustees do not represent members. And they certainly can't go and get mandates from members. That's a separate judgment in the Puawu case. But that was quite important because it helps and the court recognized that sometimes the interests of the current members of the fund may not be consistent with the long-term interests of the fund. And so we need to understand what are the, the interests of a fund, which is an inanimate creature. So as I mentioned, the pension fund is not established, and I'm talking about provident funds as well, we're just using the word pension fund, not established for the benefit only of its current members, it's a long-term vehicle intended to provide benefits for future members and dependents. And as I said, you can't act on mandates. So your members may say, don't come here with all that stuff about climate change and uh, you're only going to invest in ESCOM if they undertake to do X, Y, and Z towards a just transition and we're going to move out of carbon. And, or, for example, we have trustees saying, you know what, BAT, British American Tobacco, has been a fantastic investment for year after year after year. We've got to keep investing in it. And let's not think about food security, what, is what it's costing, our medical aids, our national health system, us as taxpayers, all of those things to have um, smoking. And I'm speaking as an ex-smoker, so I understand, I understand the addiction, but it's not good for the country. So um, sometimes our members put pressure on us as trustees to say, we want, the, it's your duty to make sure that we have as much money in the pot, particularly as we're almost 98% uh, defined contribution funds or something, we want as much money in the pot as retirement as possible. That's your job. Stop all this fluffy stuff. And it's important for us to be ready with the arguments, which is why I'm, I'm talking today, ready with the arguments why the fluffy stuff is actually absolutely core to the business of our funds. And we can't afford to say, all right, well, you say I must invest in British American tobacco, or you say I must invest in coal. Um, therefore, that's my mandate. It's simply not true, and it's a violation of the law. So what is a fiduciary duty? Simply, a fiduciary duty is a duty of loyalty. To fulfill your fiduciary duties, you have to be loyal to your principal. Your principal, as I've said, is a fund, which is a legal entity. And the, the, um, the interests of the fund are in the fulfillment of its objects. It doesn't have any other interests. The only way you can promote the interests of a fund is by making sure that it does its job in the best way possible. Best value for money, uh, benefits not just for current members but for future members therefore the fund has to be sustainable in the long term and therefore it has to look at all the risks uh, to that project and you have to take all of that into account so back to what is a fund this is what I love about funds We're not, not, not companies they're not trusts they're not collective investment schemes where your job is to uh, try and get us, uh, increase your returns and then compete with the other asset manager who has the same category of, uh, of collective investment scheme portfolios and so on. These are very special purpose funds. The state doesn't subsidize your investment in a collective investment scheme the way it does subsidize your investment in a, in a pension fund and we'll get into that why, why, that is, why that's so and why it's important. So it's a collective vehicle. It collectively empowers people. We should be really excited about, you know, one, one single pension fund member through his or her investment decisions can't make a big difference, but we've got collective power here. And you've been entrusted, we've been entrusted as trustees to exercise that power on behalf of, of uh, a whole group of people. If it's an occupational fund, it's also a vehicle through which the employer is rewarding its employees by the, by the contributions being part of pay. You have to take into account the effect of your decisions on the employer. That doesn't mean that the employer's interests are necessarily elevated against that of the current members, but they, they are, are stakeholders. As I said, it's not just for current members. But this is a stat that I dug up earlier this year that was quite surprising and made me, even made, made me think again about what pension funds are all about. Social grants, we're all, the, I mean, there's about three and a half million of us who are taxpayers in this country, and we basically, through our taxes, are funding social grants for nearly 18 million people, and it's costing 170 billion a year. And people get grumpy, like, what do I get? Well, if you're a taxpayer, you're getting a lot. Because the tax deductions that you can claim on your contributions to pension funds are enjoyed by approximately 3 point, nearly 3.2 million taxpayers. And it's costing the fiscal 73 billion, which is a lot of money. And the state is saying, this is 
I'm encouraging you. It's actually one of the reasons why we have such a high rate of uh, membership of, of pension funds in this country. Employers don't by law in most sectors, unless there's a bargaining council agreement or sectoral determination. And most, most employers are not obliged by law to put you into a pension fund. But a large, uh, by, by international standards, a very high percentage do because of these tax incentives, which actually gives the employers more bang for their buck on your remuneration because the employees are getting these, enjoying the, these wonderful tax, uh, tax deductions, which means the state is a co-investor in our pension funds. And so we need to, when we're thinking about, I'm not a preacher, I don't want to talk this missionary language, but sometimes I do think we should think about the fact that we are kind of missionaries. We have a mission as trustees, and it's not just a mission, as I say, for the current members. It's not just a mission for, for future members and current members. It's a mission for the state as well, because the state has a constitutional obligation to provide social security, and one of the ways it's doing it is by subsidizing our contributions. So, some people think this is an argument for prescribed investments. It's certainly not. But it is saying, when you look at what your fiduciary duty is, and you think about what are the objects of the fund, funds have a role to play in the overall economy. This is not just an appeal to good nature, irresponsible citizenship, and so on. It actually, for me, it colors what, we, what our funds are for and therefore what our fiduciary duties to our, those funds are. When we are trustees, when we are asset managers to those, uh, to those funds, um, when we are in any kind of position of power in relation to those funds and we have a discretion to exercise, we have to take all of that into account. Sure, nearly done. All right, so we've all heard climate change poses major financial risks. In the short, medium, and long term, it poses risks to members and their dependents, and high carbon assets may suffer a substantial depreciation in value. I read a very interesting article about it's an open letter to Praveen Gordon yesterday, I think, about six points, things to do to fix ESCOM. And one of the arguments was we need to break it up into those three generation, distribution, and what's the other one? Sorry, what was it? Transmission. Transverse, transmission, that's right. Because generation is going to become a stranded asset, as long as it's based in coal. But if it's based in, in, in renewable energy and so on, then that might be fine. But it's going to affect our investments. So we can think about saying, we're going to tell our asset managers that yes, we need to keep the lights on. So maybe we're going to, we're going to continue to buy ESCOM bonds and lend money to ESCOM, but subject to conditions. That you have to do X, Y, and Z. And part of what the condition should be is about the just transition, because if we have another Marikana or uprisings because people are losing their jobs uh, because they're being treated in a heartless way when we do this transition, we're going to lose, lose the value of our investments again. Uh, uh, again. Likewise, we've got to look at things like a lot of our funds sorry, are invested in bond portfolios which have investments in Sunrail. We've got to think about, well, if, the, <laughs> if we have another uh, situation where the, the roads are getting washed away, it's affecting our investments as well. So it seems to me, just looking at simply what they call joining the dots between fiduciary duties and the potential consequences of not, not looking at um, climate change and all the associated risks, uh, uh, risks associated with it, including the risks of uh, political economic upheaval, then, then we are violating our duties as trustees. So, but we do have, at the same time, investment opportunities. I talked a little bit about the, the, um, the breakup of ESCOM, but uh, there are all kinds of other possible, if we get in there fast as trustees and insist that our asset managers look for opportunities and not necessarily just opportunities in listed stock and listed bonds and so on, but opportunities for creating, uh, investing in the real economy in a way that is sustainable, that pr uh, promotes a secure and, and growing economy and job creation and all of that kind of thing, but in a way that is also um, mitigating risks, reducing climate risks, then we're really good trustees. I'm not going to go into, we've talked about that, a lot of these these um, step by step because I think other speakers have spoken about it, but JustShare has produced wonderful guides and this is largely from their, their, their guides about what trustees can do. I've talked a bit about the law, uh, but they've got these lovely, you just have to go onto their website, justchair.org.za, uh, and um, there is step-by-step -step guides. Unfortunately, we're not getting it out of the Financial Sector Conduct Authority. 
there was a guidance note the other day, but frankly, uh, it was enormously disappointing. Uh, given what the draft had been and what everybody was commenting on, I do appreciate that there are many funds that are too small to have uh, to build into asset. You know, they don't have segregated mandates with uh, segregated portfolios. They can't mandate specific um, asset managers to do specific things, but they certainly could have addressed the, the big funds that do, and they could have uh, taken things a bit further for those who don't. But given the time, um, you can look at all of these things. Clearly, you need to have a climate policy. There, are, there is guidance, PRI guidance, just chair guidance, and so on. You need to look at your asset management agreements. I was just saying I need to go back and look at my, my template agreement and start drafting some clauses there. Um, communicating to managers and consultants. Well, it's not more than communication, it's an actual mandate. If you want to be my asset manager, you need to do X, Y, and Z, and you need to report back. We've got financial muscle, it's time to use it. Uh, the investment strategy, again, that's going to have to be involved with You're going to have to do that with consultants, with, uh, with experts, but there are lots of resources available. And um, pursue, yeah, I think all of that's, that's implicit. Okay, so I think that uh, that's, that's my uh, quick hop, skip and jump. It is a, written in a very long opinion you can find on the Just Share website. And I'd love to hear any feedback and thoughts that you might have. On those, on those points because we all have to be part of this project to make it, make it work and make it work quickly from all that you be, has been said.